Yesterday, we celebrated the feast of the conversion of St. Paul. After the resurrection of the Lord and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, that event is, in my opinion, the most significant event in the life of the early church. For in that moment, that Damascus Road experience, as we call it, the great spoiler of the church, the hater of Christians, the persecutor of the way, met with the Lord, and in that moment was converted. <clears throat> he who saw it as his life work to persecute the church had been chosen by God to be the great teacher and the apostle to the nations. And so it came about. He who they had heard was persecuting the church now became the great preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Two years ago, I was privileged, and the boys and gentlemen of the choir will have heard me say this last night, so they can switch off at this point. Two years ago, I was privileged to lead a pilgrimage to Syria, and the first Mass that we celebrated was in an Orthodox church standing on the site of that conversion moment. Subsequently, we said Mass in a church built on the site of the house of Ananias, the man sent by God to restore sight to Paul and to baptize him. And on the third day, we had Mass in the chapel built into the walls of Damascus, marking the spot where the Apostle was low, lowered down in a basket when he had to escape from the Jews. And I urged the congregation last night to pray for the people of Syria, and I would ask you to do the same. In our Mass this morning, let us remember, of course, our Christian brothers and sisters of all traditions, but the whole people of that country. The Christians in Damascus must have been in fear and trembling when they heard that Saul was coming from Jerusalem to persecute them. We can only imagine the fear and trembling in which our brothers and sisters live at this very present moment. Today, we celebrate the memory, the memory of two of St. Paul's closest companions, his disciples, St. Timothy and St. Titus. We learn most about them from what we call the pastoral epistles, the two letters of Paul to Timothy and the letter to Titus. Letters in which he gives wise judgment and good advice to these two men, his disciples, whom he had encouraged and taught, and whom he had laid his hands upon and set them apart to be church leaders, overseers, the forerunners of our bishops. Timothy <clears throat> was to oversee the church in the city of Ephesus, and Titus, the church on the island of Crete. Mention of Ephesus reminds us that Ephesus was the place, according to tradition, to which the Apostle John took the Lord's Mother, took Our Lady. And there is, just outside the ancient city of Ephesus, a beautiful shrine called Our Lady's House. And it is there, we believe, that Our Lady lived 
and died, and after her death was assumed, taken body and soul into the glory of heaven. Again, I was very privileged to lead a group to Christian sites in Turkey, and we were at Our Lady's house on the Feast of the Assumption. A great crowd of people assembled there, and it was very interesting to see how many were Muslim. Because, as I'm sure you know, Our Lady has a very special place in Islam. Two chapters in the Quran are dedicated to her. And maybe this is a sign. Maybe it will be through Our Lady's prayers that Christian and Muslim will be drawn closer together. In the letter, the first letter, the first reading from the second letter of Paul to Timothy, the apostle speaks about faith. And that reminds us that we are, of course, in the year of faith, the year declared by our Holy Father, Pope Benedict. St. Paul speaks of Timothy's faith, how he inherited that faith from his family, from his mother and grandmother, a reminder to us of the importance of passing on the faith to the younger generations. If they don't hear it from you, their parents and grandparents, who will they hear it from? Let us pray that we may be faithful in transmitting our faith to our children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And then St. Paul goes on to say that when you were set aside for this work, you didn't receive a spirit of timidity, you received a spirit of boldness. Let us pray that we too, who have received the same spirit in our baptism, may be bold in proclaiming our faith. For that's what the Holy Father asks us to do, to rediscover the joy of believing and to be faithful in proclaiming our faith by word and, more importantly, by deed. A Christian life, a well-lived life, is the biggest and best advert to the gospel that there is. So in this year of faith, let us ask for the prayers of Our Lady, St. Paul, St. Timothy, St. Titus, that they may help us to be faithful in proclaiming the faith in our generation as they did in theirs. And may all be done to the greater glory of Almighty God. Amen.